Hello and welcome. This is Cheryl. Thank you so much for joining me today. In this video, I'm going to create some poppy background press plate cards. I'm using this poppy background plus press plate as well as the coordinating layering stencil and the Yana's poppy die that came out in August. When these first came out, my first thought was Remembrance Day here in Canada and it's coming up in November and I thought it'd be great to create um, cards or creations for it if that was something that anyone wanted to do. However, all of these backgrounds work perfectly for just creating cards in general. Um, I just related the poppy with November for that reason. So I already did a video recently with the poinsettia background. These techniques that I'm using today would also work really well with that poinsettia press plate and also the techniques that I used with that poinsettia press plate would work for these. So I'm going to link that at the end of this video. But so far what I've done is use that poppy press plate background to foil with matte silver foil on hammer mill cardstock. And right now I'm using some opaque black glimmer foil on clear Duralar. This is a product from Ranger. It's made to use with alcohol inks. You could use other ways as well. And I will be using alcohol inks with this in a little bit. But I wanted to create a bunch of backgrounds, have them ready, and then I will continue on and do my cards. So that's all the positive foiling that I'm doing. Now I'm gonna take that solid hot foil plate, use those negative pieces and foil those onto some hammer mill cardstock. We might as well use up that foil and create cards with those. Um, they're going to be very, very simple cards, but why not use it up rather than waste it? I love the striking combination of that black with that white. I did that with my poinsettia one though, so I am going to do something a little bit different with this particular one. And now I'm using that negative uh, matte silver foil, again doing it on hammer mill cardstock. And then I'm going to let those um, or leave those backgrounds to the side to complete in a little bit. So I love using those negative solid or that negative solid hot foil plate to use up as much of that foil as possible. If supplies are not cheap, it might as well use them up and um, not have any waste. So the next thing, next background I'm going to do is use my better press system. I'm using some Arches hot press watercolor paper. Definitely want watercolor paper here and I'm using hot press because I like the smooth finish on it. You could use regular watercolor paper if you wanted. I just wanted to do something a little bit different from what I normally do. So I have that watercolor paper taped to the clear plate. I'm using some Versamark ink and I'm making sure that I've got my background completely covered. Then I put the clear plate on the base and put it through my Spellbinders Platinum 6 machine for that pressure to press that ink in. So once I know that I've got all of the ink completely covered on my background, I can take that off and I'm gonna cover it with some black embossing powder. Now this is just the look that I was going for for the card that I was planning to make. You could use any color of embossing powder here. Um, when you see what I'm gonna do with it, you'll be able to pick and choose which colors you would want um, if you wanted something instead of the black, but just know that this will work with other colors as well. It doesn't have to be just black. I'm using my embossing tool just to make sure that everything is melted. Now, I didn't mention it, but I wanted to say it now. I did use my embossing powder tool before pressing with that ink. I wanted to make sure that all of my embossing powder only stuck to the ink and not oils or anything that was on the rest of that cardstock. So for this background, I'm going to use some Magicals pigment powders. So I have the autumn leaves set here. I'm using the red one and the green one. And one thing that I like to do when I'm doing this with watercolor paper is I like to spray the backside of my paper as well as my surface and then press that paper onto my surface. It kind of suctions it in place. This helps that paper not curl. It curls a tiny little bit to the side, but not nearly as much as if I had that dry background and only a wet front, then that paper really starts to curl and that affects the way that those magicals um, run. So when it starts to curl, you tend to have whatever you're working on kind of run just to the side. I don't want it, that to happen. So this is how I do it to make sure that that paper stays flat. It works perfectly. The only thing is because I have all of that moisture underneath there and it's kind of suctioned to my table, it does take longer to dry. And on this particular day, I was going to go out and do some errands anyway. So I wasn't going to be home for a little bit. So I had time to be waiting and I wanted, um, to use that time up as best as possible. Once I've put some of the powders down there, I'm using my mister again to spray more water on there. I use a fan brush to sprinkle my powders on there. Um, 
I find that I don't get, or I can sprinkle it a little bit better. I'm a little bit heavy handed with this particular background and these powders today, mainly because I was in a rush wanting to get this part done before I needed to leave. And um, so you don't necessarily have to be this heavy handed. You could be a lot lighter handed. I sprayed with water first, put the magicals down and then sprayed with water again. Another option would be just to spray with, or just to put the magicals down and then spray with water. You can do that as well. And again, if you're not, or if you're taking your time, you can be a little bit lighter handed with this. To take some of that excess off because I realized how dark it was getting, I'm just using a clean paper towel. I kind of scrunch it up and I sop up some of that color as well as some of that moisture. If by chance I had another project in mind, what I could have done was take it one, yet another piece of either mixed media cardstock or watercolor cardstock and use that to sop up some of the excess. Again, I was in a rush, I wanted to just finish it. Now, when you're doing or using these magicals, sometimes you get clumps of the color on that background. In order to break that up, I just have a wet brush and I just kind of um, dab it in those clumps. It helps to break them up a little bit. Some of those clumps are fine, but I don't want too many of them on my background. Now, I just used the red and the green here. You can obviously use whatever color you want to create the poppies that you're wanting to create. And again, this would work with other plates and other backgrounds as well. That one to the right where I just did a plain background, I have a different thing in mind for that, and I just wanted to have that magical background to do what I have in mind. So for my first card, I'm using that very first foiled background. This one has the matte silver foil on the hammer mill cardstock. I'm using my favorite Cloud9 interference ink pads here. Now, one thing that I normally do with these is I normally go down with some black soot distress ink and do some shading on some of the areas clean my stencil off and then go on with the interference ink. And the reason I like to do that is because these interference inks have a different color that shows up on black or dark cardstock than they do on light. For a little bit of a change, I chose to use some Hickory Smoke Distress Ink. It's not quite as stark and dramatic as black, and I really love the look of it. It's a little bit more subtle, but it still gets you to be able to see some of the interference color. And this I'm using here is Cherry Bomb. It has like a pinky red color for the light or white cardstock and a bit of a purple tone for the black or dark cardstock. So you can see that purpley tone on this center part of those flowers. And I'm putting that shading on the base or the center part of the leaves, sorry, petals. And um, I'm trying to be light handed with it. I want to see that color, but I want to see mostly the um, color on the light. I want to see that pinky red color. So I'm going to do that same step with all of my layers here. For some of the greenery, I'm using Summer Garden um, Interference Ink. That one shows up green on white or light cardstock and blue on black or dark cardstock. So this particular layer has some of those poppy pods and I wanted to make sure that they were green. I tend to get a little bit too focused on the flowers. And in the past when I've used this layering stencil or this, yeah, this layering stencil, I've just gone and done them all that same red or the color that I was doing the poppies and I wanted to make sure to pause and make sure that they were green. So I did them in that matte summer garden and cleaned off my stencil because I didn't want to get any of that green on my brush for the flowers. So I have ink blending brushes for each one of my interference pads. I just have a label maker that I make a label for each one of the handles so I know exactly which brush is for which one. You don't wanna mix your interference ink brushes with your other ink brushes. You don't wanna contaminate your pads. So by using this hickory smoke here, I can get that shading on the inside. It's a very easy way to do it and I really love the look of this. If you wanna see it with the black or the dark ink on there before the interference. I have a whole playlist with interference videos that I've done in different techniques. And the one that I, one of the things that I do often is using that black ink. So you'll be able to find it on any one of, or most of those videos, or even that poinsettia one that I'll be linking at the end of this video, it'll be on there because I know I did that with the poinsettia plate. So when I'm doing my ink blending with the stencil, I'm doing a clockwise and a counterclockwise motion. I wanna make sure to get that ink all the way to the edges of the stencil on all the areas. And I love the fact that there is a stencil to go with it. It makes coloring this image nice and quick and easy. And it also um, makes it pristine. 
So you could take some markers and you could color it by hand and that would still work. But if you're wanting to use special inks, like these interference inks with it, this is a great way to do it. Now, the one thing that I do do once I'm done doing my ink blending on all the areas is I will take a clean paper towel and I'll just blot that image because some of those open areas have a little bit of foiling on them and that foil will resist these inks. So I wanna make sure to remove any of that excess ink before I go to make my card. I don't want to have happen to have some of that ink on there and put my finger in it and accidentally transfer it somewhere where I don't want to go. So I do make sure to blot it off just to make sure to get any of that excess off and to keep it as clean as possible. For the last layer, I'm going to use a Regal Gray interference pad. This one shows up gray on white or light cardstock and then it shows up purple on black or dark. And this is an area that does have some foiling rate in it. So that's one of the main reasons why I need to make sure to clean it off. I wanna make sure there's no wet ink on the top of my foil. So you don't have to be careful when you're doing this. I will tend to blot it once just to take any excess off and then I will just rub it down just to make sure to get all of that off. And look at that gorgeous background. The combination of the interference inks with that silver foil is just stunning and it really doesn't do it any justice on camera. It's really pretty in real life. You get the nice shimmer from those interference inks. So I'm going to take this piece here, I'm cutting it down to four inches by five and a quarter inches. For all of the cards today, all of the poppy backgrounds, I'm cutting the poppy part four inches by five and a quarter and the mat to go around it, they are all four and an eighth by five and three eighths. Now, one of the things I love to do is use my ink pads to color my mats to go behind my images, especially when I'm using interference inks, because it's really hard to coordinate cardstock to go with that interference ink. If I'm using the actual pad, I know it's going to be perfect. Often I will use black or white cardstock, but because in this instance I use that Hickory Smoke Distress Pad, I wanted the color that shows up on top of that Hickory Smoke, so I put that Hickory Smoke down first, then I put that Cherry Bomb down and then obviously cleaned up my desk to make sure that I didn't have ink on there that could get on everything else. So I glued that piece down and then I glued my poppy background down here and I'm going to let that completely dry. I put an acrylic block on top of these layers between um, or while I'm putting glue on something else because I wanna make sure that everything is nice and flat. It stays nice and flat, the glue has good contact. Now I'm going to add a sentiment to this. I'm not doing any Remembrance Day sentiments because I don't have any stamps. I couldn't find any stamps or dies um, that had the look that I was wanting. So I'm just gonna make these into kind of generic cards for all different occasions. I chose a sentiment for this one from the Typewriter Adventure Sentiment Stamp Set. Often I'm asked or I see comments about whether you can stamp with these inks and you absolutely can. The only thing is these are foam pads. So they're very, very soft and they also come very, very juicy. So you want to err on the side of caution when it comes to the ink. I like to use my Misty stamping tool with it so then I can be very light with the ink and do several coats. So I'm very light handed and gentle with that ink. You can always add more, but if you get too much on there, you can't take anything away from it. You can't take the excess off of there. So the other thing that I wanted to do with that sentiment is I wanted to, to have a colored outline and rather than coloring some cardstock and um, trimming it down because it's so tiny and I thought the mat would be a little bit chunky I just lightly brushed that ink around the outside of my sentiment it makes it pop just a little bit more and then I took one of the scrap pieces of cardstock and just cut a strip to add a couple strips behind there just to give it a tiny bit of dimension the foam strips that I have are quite dimensional and I didn't want that much dimension on it, but I did want it to pop off of that card just a little bit more. So once I have those strips on there, I can glue this right down to my card and I have a finished card. And I also like to use smaller sentiments for this because that background is so gorgeous. I don't want to um, cover it up. While I have that to the side drying, I have my solid hot foiled silver 
poppy background. And I just use that regal gray interference pad to color that whole background. I'm going to do this same technique for the solid hot foiled black one. So you'll be able to see exactly what I did there, but it's really nothing special. The one thing that I wanted to do though, is I wanted to add a bit of a different center to my poppy centers. I wanted to give them a little bit of sparkle. So I'm using some moon dust stickles glitter gel. I'm using one of Simon Hurley's palette knives with that and just going over those areas for the center of the flowers. I'll set that aside and let that completely dry and it is going to even sparkle more in the center of those flowers. So here I have the pop or the black solid, solid hot foiled background and I'm going to do exactly what I did with that silver one. So I'm using that regal gray interference pad. The one thing to note though um, not about this, but about that Stickles Glitter Gel is between these takes, I did completely clean off that palette knife as well as that stencil. You want to make sure to clean that glitter paste off there quickly. You don't want it to dry on there. You don't want to pop, accidentally damage your stencil by trying to get dry paste off of there. So you can see this background very, very easy. I'm just using that Regal Gray Interference Pad. So it's going to show up or it's going to look gray until you tilt it in the light and then you're going to see that purple color. And it's going to show up a little bit on both the flowers as well as the background because this particular black foil has an opacity to it. It kind of has, like it doesn't have any shine to it at all. It's totally matte. So it just has a little bit of tooth and it takes a little bit of that ink. Not a whole lot, but a little bit. And I did wipe off this background just to make sure that I didn't have any wet um, interference inks on that background, just to make sure that there wasn't anything that could pull up. Then I'm using that same background stencil or that same stencil for the center of the poppies and using that moon dust stickles glitter gel. I've cut my mats and my poppy piece down already ready to go. I have some matte silver cardstock to go behind my gray piece here. And again, these are cut to the same size as the first one. So those mats are cut to five and three eighths by four and an eighth. And my poppy pieces are cut to four inches by five and a quarter. For the silver one here, I have a Sending Joy Sentiment. This is from the uh, Sending Joy Sentiments press plate set. That one was done on a previous video with some other cards and it is stamped or pressed and embossed with silver embossing powder. So it matches perfectly and it has a little bit of dimension with that embossing powder. For my black one here, I have a piece of black cardstock that I used for my mat and I used that Regal Gray pad to uh, rub around the edges so that I get a little bit of that purple interference on there. And then I'm using a sentiment from the You Are Everything Sentiments press plate and die set. So once again, that one was done with a previous card and or with a previous video. And it's just one that I had extras of. So the next one I'm doing is with that hot foiled background on the Jurelar. So the first thing I want to do is I want to turn that over. I'm only working on the back. I'm not working on the foiled side. I think if you would work on the foiled side, it would remove some of that foiled um, image. So only work on the back. I'm using some of the new alcohol ink colors from Ranger. These came out in the summer and I've had them since the summer, but I haven't had a project that I've wanted to do alcohol inks on until now. So I'm using two different color or four different colors here from one of the sets. I have Cosmopolitan and Juniper. So Cosmopolitan is that pink one and Juniper is the light green. From the other set, I have Brick and Wilderness. So Brick is that darker red color and Wilderness is the darker green color. Now, Juniper is a color that was discontinued and that they've brought back. So I just swapped it with the one that I already had that was old. So you'll see my packaging or you may see that the packaging or the label on the bottle is a little bit different. That's because it's an older bottle. It was discontinued, came back, and I might as well use my old stuff up before I open up the new stuff. So you can see that I can see really, really easily the image on the front of this because it's clear. I've got a good image or I got, I got a good view of the whole image. So I'm concentrating the cosmopolitan and the brick on the poppy areas. And I'm going to do the juniper and the wilderness on the leaf areas. Now, if I notice that some of the alcohol ink is seeping underneath and going to the front, I am moving that. And that's what I did just a moment ago. This 
piece of jewel art is bigger than my image and I know that I'm going to be cutting it down. So I wanted to make sure that that, it, that piece was bigger. So if anything seeped underneath, there was a good chance it wasn't going to seep to the part that I was going to cut down to. But I am still making sure to try not to get anything seeping to that front. I don't want anything possibly damaging that image. For the alcohol inks, I'm using just some isopropyl alcohol with it. When you're working with alcohol inks, you can just use isopropyl alcohol. If you're only using the alcohol inks, if you're using some of the mixatives or the alloys, you do need to use the Ranger blending solution because it doesn't work well with the isopropyl. But the regular inks, just the transparent inks, those work perfectly. So I'm putting a little bit of that isopropyl and then a little bit of each one of the colors of the brick and of the cosmopolitan. And just using my alcohol ink blower tool to blow that around. Once I have my poppies done, I'm gonna do the same method with the leaves. I'm just gonna use a little bit of both the juniper and the wilderness. I'll put the darker colors where I want the color to be a little bit darker and then the lighter color where I want it to be just a little bit lighter. Now, working with alcohol inks is completely different than say doing ink blending or whatnot. You have some control over it, but there's certain things that you don't necessarily have control over. So you kind of, it's one of those things that you kind of have to give a little bit to the alcohol ink gods, if you will. You have to just let it be, or you have to get a bit, give it a little bit of control up. So again, I have control over this and I did make sure that my poppy areas were dry so that they would resist that alcohol ink a little bit. But if that alcohol ink goes against them and starts to rehydrate them, it is going to seep into that. And a little bit I don't mind, but I am trying to control it as much as I can. So I will keep on working until I have a background that I love. And we're working on the back here, so it does kind of look a little bit like a hot mess, but it looks really cool when you turn it over and you'll see that later. Now, I think it would be fun to do a stained glass type card out of this, but because this backside looks a little bit ugly, it's not really pretty to look like or look at. That's one of the reasons why I would resist doing that, just because it's not very pretty on the inside. So we're just going to put it on some white cardstock. So we're going to really be able to see those alcohol ink colors, but we're not going to have to see the ugly backside to it. So I keep working on this background until I'm finished and I'm nearly finished here, but I did want to add a little bit of that cosmopolitan of that pink color to my flowers. I wanted a little bit or some lighter areas to them. And by having a couple colors, it just gives it a little bit more interest to it. So once this is dry, I can use some strong double-sided tape and just tape this entire thing to some cardstock to completely protect that whole back piece. I wouldn't use glue on here because you're going to be able to see that glue mostly through it, unless you only put the glue where that black foiling is. But it does... Um, it does show up right through. So you wanna make sure to resist that. Just like that Magicals background, if there's an area that I get a little bit too much alcohol ink on, I could just use a piece of paper towel and sop up that excess. Um, so you do have a little bit of control if it gets a little bit too much. For cleanup, I'm just working on my glass surface here. So I can just use a spray of isopropyl alcohol and paper towel to clean that up completely. So you can see when I turn that over to the front, it does look a lot better on that front piece, especially when you put it against some white cardstock. You get variations from the ink. So there's some areas that are lighter, some areas that are darker. But in my opinion, that's some of the interest to alcohol inks. I think it looks interesting and it looks unique that way. So I have a piece or I have a roll of sequang tape here that I just put this piece on and the, it's the alcohol ink side to that back. You want to make sure that your alcohol or inks are completely dry before doing that because the alcohol or the isopropyl will resist that adhesive or it will affect that adhesive if it's not dry. So make sure that it's completely dry. I have this piece that I'm cutting down to five and a quarter inches by four inches before I glue it down to the cardstock. In hindsight, I would glue it down to the cardstock first and then I would trim it down. So I was trimming down all of the layers at once. This ends up working, but you just have to be a little bit more careful when you're going back and trimming it after it's on the white cardstock. At first I was gonna put this on a black mat, but once I put the red behind her, behind it, the poppies just seemed a little bit more vibrant and a little bit brighter. So I did end up going with that red cardstock. I just wanted, I didn't want it to be quite as dark. 
Now I use black foil here because I wanted to hide all of that alcohol ink behind it. And because I thought the alcohol ink behind there with that black foil would be nice and dramatic. You likely could use other colors here. I think they are opaque enough that they wouldn't show through, but I haven't actually tried it yet. So um, at one point I will try it just to see, but I really love the look of the, the um, black with the reds and greens there. So with everything ready to go, I can glue that onto my card base. Now at this point, I decided I wanted just a little bit of a different texture in the center of those poinsettias. So once again, I'm pulling out that stencil, using that Moon Dust Stickles Glitter Gel and adding some sparkle to the center of the flowers. And once again, I'm going to have to wait for this to completely dry. And because we're doing this on the Duralar, Duralar is plastic, it's going to take even longer than working on cardstock for that to dry because it's only going to be drying from one way. So I'm going to use that same Moon Dust Stickles Glitter Gel. You could use other colors of Stickles Glitter Gel or um, Glitter Paste for this as well. I tend to use the Moon Dust because it's light, it's iridescent. If there's color underneath it, that shows through. And I don't want anything to take away from the colors I have on my background. I'm only interested in adding um, some texture and some sparkle to the center of those flowers. So with that done, I can set that aside to totally dry. And I figured because I had to wait for that one to dry anyways, I might as well put them on my Magicals Poppy background as well. Might as well wait for two backgrounds to dry rather than only waiting for the one and then having to wait for the second one later. So I put that on my sticky mat, put those gl that glitter gel there. This time I didn't clean between the two between, between doing the two backgrounds because I was doing them back to back. There wasn't anything that I was doing in between there. Once that stickles is completely dry, I can glue that to my card base. And then I have yet another sentiment that was done from a previous session. This is once again from the You Are Everything Sentiments press plate and die set. This one I had foiled with some prism glimmer foil. So again, you can use um, different foils to match. I think the, glimmer, the prism glimmer foil worked really well with the stickles in the center of the flowers, so that's why I chose that. And I also chose it because it was a little bit brighter and it just kind of, to me, brightened up the card a little bit. For that Magicals poppy background there, I am cutting that down. My background, my stickles are completely dry, so I'm ready to go and assemble my card. I have everything cut down once again to those same sizes. So this green piece is cut to five and three eighths by four and an eighth. My poppy piece is once again four, eight, four inches by five and a quarter inches. And I can glue that down. I'm gluing everything with that Barely Art Craft glue that I have in a fine line bottle. I use this for pretty much everything. It goes a really, really long way. And I love having a little bit of wiggle room when I'm putting things down. My sentiment is once again that you are everything sentiment press plate and die set. This one is on black cardstock and it's embossed with silver embossing powder. So it brightens it up and pulls out the centers of those flowers. Now because those magicals are water based, when I put the stickles glitter gels on it, it rehydrated that ink and it blended with that with the stickles glitter gel. So you can see that they're a little bit different color. I still love how they turned out, but just be aware if you're putting that glitter gel on something that is water soluble or dye based, it is going to rehydrate that and that is going to affect the color. For my last card, I'm going to incorporate the Yanni's, Yana's Poppy die set. So the first thing I'm doing is die cutting that poppy with some matte silver foil. And this is from the Silver Treasure cardstock pack. I chose the matte because I wanted to, I really love the combination of the matte silver with the um, reds for the poppy for the very first card. And I thought it would be a lovely thing for this card as well. I don't want anything to... Um, bright or too shiny so I thought the matte silver was perfect. Then I used the poppy to die cut that other Magicals background that I had created. Before pulling all of those pieces out of that die set I'm using a piece of press and seal. I'm pressing that onto the back because I want to take all of these pieces out at once and for what I'm doing and I'm just doing some paper piecing I want to know exactly where all of these pieces are. This just makes it a little bit quicker and a little bit easier. Now this particular poppy doesn't have a ton of pieces so I could easily have figured out where all the pieces went but I find it's really easy to have it on that press and seal, have that die cut beside where I'm going to put the 
um, pieces in and it just makes it really easy to place them in place. So I have a piece of vellum here that I've cut for the shadow around my poppy. I love the fact that Yana's dies come with that shadow. So it makes it a good spot for them to um, go on. So I'm not sure what happened with my camera there. It was kind of really wiggly and I think it was trying to focus on my hand as I was doing the glue. Um, it's one of those things that I don't notice until afterwards. So I put the glue on that outline, put it onto the vellum and because vellum doesn't like moisture, doesn't love the liquid glue, but I only use a tiny little bit so it doesn't really warp, but I do put that acrylic block on top of there just to press it down nice and flat and make sure that everything stays flat. Now I will use that liquid glue in a couple areas. I'll usually use it in like, I don't know, three to five areas at once. And then I will place the pieces in like a puzzle piece. So it's a really easy technique to do. And you can actually get two cards out of this if you want. I am using the silver outline with the red on the, or the magical piece on the inside for my card. But I will have that outline that I have on the press and seal, as well as the silver bits that were cut out of that silver outline. So you could create a unique card with using that magicals outline with the silver inlay. I think that would be interesting too. I don't do it in this video, but I do take those pieces and I'll insert in them into my magical piece so you can see both of them. And at one point I was curious whether I should use both of them on the card but it didn't really align with what or the vision that I had in my head and what I wanted to do. So I am keeping the silver piece on the inside of this flower. I like that center to be that silver, something just a little bit different. So now I'm taking those extra pieces and just inlaying, inlaying them into my poppy piece here. And you can see it still goes fairly quick. It's fairly easy to recognize the pieces and where they go, but it does take just a tiny bit longer than when I put the when I put the first one together basically. But I can take this, put this onto that press and seal and just put it aside and use it to create another card. And I think that would be a unique and interesting element as well. So once I have that together, I can start assembling the rest of my card. So there's the difference between the two of them there. And you can see that they have a unique look to them um, with that silver on the inside and the color on the outside. So for this one, I'm using that background press plate, but I'm using it without any ink. So I have some better press cardstock here. I am taping that to my clear plate. I have my poppy background. It's completely cleaned off. And I'm just going to put that through my Platinum 6 machine, again, with no ink. I just want to get that pressed texture on the back, but I don't want to have any color. I don't want to take anything away from the poppy image. So once that is done, I can pull that off of there. And I can start to trim that down for my card. And it's one of those backgrounds. It's not as prominent of an embossing as an embossing folder. It just presses that texture in there and it gives it quite a unique look. And I just love, um, I, I love using my better press in many different ways. So it makes it so much more versatile when you know of many different ways to use it. So when you have a background, that doesn't necessarily mean you have to use ink with it. So I have my mat here cut out of that same silver mat cardstock that I cut my poinsettia out of. I'm going to glue that to the card and then I'm going to glue this pressed background. And because there's no ink on it, it's very, very neutral. So when I go to put that poppy on there, there's a lot of white space. And that's where I was considering using both flowers to fill in the area. But what I chose to do instead was take my magicals background that I cut that poppy out of. I cut it down to three and three quarter inches by five inches. And then I embossed another piece of better press cardstock with that poppy background and press plate. And I cut that down to three and a half inches by four and three quarter inches. By doing this, I still have that texture from that pressed background plate showing, but I'm just incorporating a little bit more color to that background to tie in the color for that poppy. And with the basically four layers here before that poppy, it just gives it a really um, rich look. I just really love the look of it. I love that silver outline and the two different pressed poppy backgrounds there. So with those glued together, I can add my poppy to the background of my card. When I'm putting the glue on here, I'm just making sure that glue is behind my die cut pieces. I'm not putting any of the glue behind the vellum piece where it's visible. 
it will show through. Even vellum adhesive shows through on vellum, and I never like that. So I always try to put it on my vellum in an area that is completely hidden. So I have once and again another You Are Everything sentiments or You Are Everything sentiments press plate and die set. This one was done with prism foil. I probably would have preferred it just be matte silver foil, but I didn't have one already done and I didn't want to pull my glimmer machine out again. So I thought the prism foil worked well with some of the shimmer that you get with the magicals. These particular backgrounds and my poppy, I don't have a ton of shimmer them to them because when I blotted them with the paper towel, I kind of removed some of it, but I still have a little bit. And next we have our poppy embossed background with those magicals. And once again, you can use other colors for these magicals. I think it would be beautiful with a gold background or a silver background. I chose not to do a silver one simply because I didn't want there to be too much silver in here. I wanted to show some different backgrounds here. And then we have our alcohol inks with that black glimmered background on the Duralar. And again, you could do those poppies in whatever colors you want. And then some very simple background cards here using the negative foil with that um, royal gray interference pad. My mind went blank there. And I love the different look from those two different foiled backgrounds. Those are the same inks, but you get a very different look between the two of them because of the way the ink interacts with them. Finally, we have our very first card with that matte silver foil and the interference stenciling to fill in all of those flowers. And I just love the look of those flowers. They're absolutely gorgeous. Thank you so much for joining me today. I really appreciate all of the time that you spend with me. I hope you have a fantastic day.